This presentation will explain and evaluate the basis of cumulative causation Merdal development theory. This theory, coined by Swedish economist Gernal Merdal, states that economic inequalities and disparities are growing due to the unbalanced economic growth and resulting poverty in undeveloped nations. Merdal's theory doesn't follow the traditional economic theories, which only assume that stable equilibrium exists in the economy. It believes that the assumptions behind these theories are unrealistic and irrelevant, as Merdal thought that they were never developed to comprehend the reality of great and growing economic inequalities and of, and of the dynamic processes of underdevelopment and development. Therefore, besides the demand and supply, the theory also associates with non-economic factors such as institutional, political, and social factors. The phrase cumulative causation is mentioned in the theory because its characteristics are exhibited in most processes. You can consider this as a typical logic of fee positive feedback loop, where a small initial change amplifies over time to become substantial trend. Thus, cumulative causation can be applied to regional growth processes since re rich regions are growing richer and poor regions are growing poorer. There are two types of effects that draw these processes, backwash effects and spread effects. Backwash effects describe a divergent process where economic activities are more attracted by the development of a rich country than by the low wages of a poor nation. Such economic activities include affording better infrastructures and services for the population. Hence, since these effects retard growth in poor areas due to lack of external economies, they are considered unfavorable. On the other hand, spread effects describe a convergent process and are considered favorable. The spread effects of momentum are placed in the center of economic expansion, operating through external trade, capital movement, migration, and other favorable changes that weave themselves into the cumulative social process by the circular causation. Upon this theory, Myrtle proposed three major contributions, labor migration, capital movement, and difference in trade facilities. Myrtle analyzes that residents tend to migrate to developed regions of the country for social and financial reasons, and this is especially true with the case of the economic migration in the Philippines. Filipino residents in rural areas move to metro cities like Metro Manila for better job opportunities and better education. As a spread effect, the destination will benefit the origin and its surroundings since workers often send remittances to relieve disparities. As for the capital movement, Myrtle sees that the banking system takes the responsibility for shifting the savings of villages and small cities to areas where capital is more safe and more yielding. This can be seen in the case study of China's rural versus urban quality of life. Although the outflow of rural funds has increased due to the loans from banks, the banking system only returned a fraction of the deposits back into the original agricultural sector throughout the period. Therefore, as a result of the backwash effect on capital mobility, large cities such as Beijing will become more developed while, so, while small cities and villages in Guizhou become poorer. Last but not least, lack of opportunities in trade and businesses in poor areas explain why regional disparities will continue to grow in those areas. In the case study of South Africa's apartheid, the segregation between ethnic groups from the Dutch era up until the 1990s has led to a backwash effect that is, the higher crime rates in the population of poor neighborhoods. As you can see from these examples, the outcome is that the developed regions tend to create the backwash effects on the poor regions. Therefore, in the poor areas, it can be concluded that the spread effects are weak relative to the backwash effects. Now that you have learned the basis, it is also important to weigh the strengths and weaknesses of the theory. Let's start with the strengths. One benefit of Merdo's theory is that it helps us visualize the effects that wealthy areas place on the poor areas. Merdo does this by introducing the backwash and the slash effects. And secondly, the theory allows us to see the disadvantages of relying solely on economics. Thus, Merdo's theory explains the importance of taking other aspects into account, such as social and political. As for the concept of the theory, many econ economists do criticize the theory, and some claim that Merdo's position in, on disparities is weak because he only raises arguments that pertain to methodology. Such methodology include if reforming tax systems, which can, which can only be achieved if we change the minds of people.
Another weakness to point out is that Merzo's view on disparities is overly pessimistic. He criticizes some development theories that incorporate colonial theory and Rosedale stages of growth for having implicit political bias. Lastly, Merdal does not take the nature factor into account, as environment issues may be capable of measuring levels of development. Thank you for listening.